Okay, um, in this video and in the next video, we're going to consider taking derivatives of transcendental functions. And we have four problems here. We don't think we can um, complete all of them in, in one video and satisfy the time limit. So we're going to take these two here in this video, and then in the next video, we'll do these two problems. And here for the first problem, we have y equals e to the 2x times 2 times the cosine of 3x plus 3 times the sine of 3x. Okay, and we want to find out what is dy dx. Now, notice how this is set up. Um, we have e times this plus e times this. And what we could do is we could break it up like that and write it out with e times this and e times that. Um, and see, if we did that, for example, here we have e to the 2x times 2 times the cosine of 3x, and likewise over here only times the sine of 3x times 3. When we take derivatives, it's going to be this times this plus this times this. I'll do the same over here, but we don't have to do it that way. What we can do is, when we're taking the derivatives, is hold this whole, what's inside the parentheses, since both of these are being multiplied by e to the 2x, hold both of these constant and multiply by the derivative of that. Then for the second part, we'll hold this constant and multiply by the derivative of what we have inside the parentheses. So let's do that. So we're going to have dy dx That will equal, we're holding this constant here, so this is going to be 2 times the cosine of 3x plus 3 times the sine of 3x times the derivative of e to the 2x. And of course, the derivative of e to the x, that is just e to the x. In this case, it would be dx, dx, we're taking derivatives with respect to x. So here it's going to be e to the 2x times the derivative of this, of the derivative of 2x, which is just going to be 2 times dx, dx, which is just 1. So this is just going to be times 2 e to the 2x. And now we're going to have we're going to hold this constant, so we have plus e to the 2x times the derivative of these. The derivative of the cosine of 3x, of course that's minus the sine of 3x. Then we have to multiply by the derivative of this. And that's going to be 3 times dx dx. So that's just going to be minus 3. And here, when we take the derivative, that's going to be plus the cosine of 3x. And again, we take the derivative of what we're taking the cosine of. And that would be 3 times dx dx, or that's just times... 3. So here, it's going to be e to the 2x, this will be minus 6 times the sine of 3x. And here, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 9 times the cosine of 3x. And let's see. Both of these are being multiplied on each side of the equation by e to the 2x. So here we have, and this is the cosine of 3x, 
That's the cosine of 3x. The sine of 3x. The sine of 3x. Let's think we should be able to simplify this without much problem. Um, here we have 4 cosine of 3x. Here we have 9 cosine of 3x. So that's 13 times the cosine of 3x times e to the 2x. And then here we have 6 sine of 3x uh, minus 6 times the sine of 3x. So those are going to cancel. So there's our answer. This is dy dx. So that's it. Uh, there's no tricks involved. It's just applying the rules that you've learned uh, throughout the course and just kind of following it through step by step. And uh, there's our answer. So let's look at the next problem. y equals e to the inverse sine of x. That's a rather unusual looking function. Let's see, y equals not e to the x power, but e to the inverse sine of x. That's what power we're raising it to. So if you were asked this on a test, how would you find dy dx? And the answer is, it's just what you've been doing all along. It's nothing different. It equals e to this power. Now, times the derivative of this. So it's this times d dx of the inverse sine of x. And this hope you remember how to do. That's just going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared times the derivative of this, but that's just going to be dx dx, which is 1. So this d dx for the inverse sine of x, that's just 1 over square root 1 minus x squared times the derivative of that with respect to x, you have dx dx, so we don't bother writing that down because that's just 1. So our answer here then is just do away with that. And dy dx is just e to the inverse sine of x divided by square root of 1 minus x squared. And that's it. That's our answer. There's no more to it involved in that. So this is uh, a rather unusual looking function, granted. Um, I don't know of any kind of practical physical problem where you might encounter this, but nonetheless, you tackle it uh, just like you do all the other functions that you've learned. It's going to be e dy dx is going to be e to this power times the derivative of this, which is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared times dx dx, which is 1. Uh, so that's it. That solves the problem. And we're going to stop the video here. We're afraid by the time we get to both of these, we might overrun our time limit. So come back, join us for the next video, and we'll find dy dx for this expression and also for this expression.